Thank you. How about mm. But where is Katie, our organizer and host? I'm just curious. She's also thinking about. Ah, maybe she's trying to cut. Uh, anyway, I will gradually start. Uh, and I was I saying Katie because I was just going to say thanks for her, but she's not. <laughs> she's not here. So uh, anyway, I. Uh, so, okay, we'll start with some stories and maybe some people uh, will, will gather at some point. So, I mean, generally, uh, just for, for some preliminary remarks, uh, after saying this thank you for Katie, who is not here, uh, 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 generally, I would say that uh, I was really interested in to take part in this conference, not just because the all most of the people are my friends and we sort of co collaborate since quite a long time, uh, but also, I think generally, I was curious how to work through these questions, uh, like Artemi presented yesterday about this uh, philosophical anthropology, because I was actually teaching course in Moscow before, but on philosophical anthropology, but with more uh, sort of. Katie, я уже начал. Да, приходи, пожалуйста. I'm sorry, it was Katie, and just like you know, I see this uh, like so. Where, where, where else you could find such conferences except of here, you know, when you have such a lively conversation and so on. So, uh, so yes, and I, I was interested also in rethinking this uh, philosophical anthropology in relation to, uh, to contemporary debates. Of course, it's, I'm not focused on this conservative German anthropology presented by Galen or Plessner, though they are, I think it has the, the interesting thing which could be interpreted today. And also, uh, second part, I will try to present some of materials from my uh, book about uh, uh, called uh, tentatively, which will be tentatively, tentatively called Against the Continuum, Continuum, Sleep and Subjectivity in Capitalist Modernity. But I, I would just dwell on uh, uh, dwell on concluding parts from this book, which is not so much about sleep and vigilance as it was uh, my initial project, but some uh, ontological or uh, anthropological consequences uh, from this conjuncture which I discuss in this book. So, uh, but I will try to explain later a little bit uh, shorter. So generally, I, I'm, I think that generally uh, it's very inspiring to, to work in this philosophical anthropology, uh, from the point of philosophical anthropology exactly here in Russia, and I miss this context of temporary work in UK. Uh, and for example, mo most shocking recent anthropological fact, uh, fact was the story of uh, circulated in media, and no nobody knows whether it's true or fake, uh, about uh, Mikhail Fratkov, a corrupted prime minister of first presidency of Putin, who this sort of bold, shorty, looking like a Berlusconi, who fled from Russia to India, in the end of his career, and joined so-called Standing Baba's sect. Uh, you know, Standing <laughs> Baba's sect. Uh, this is a people, Standing Baba's like Standing Fathers. And they, this is a very radical sect, uh, which, uh, and they, uh, their oath, what they promised to themselves when they joined this sect, is they, they should stand all three or four years not laying down, not sleeping. So for, so for me, uh, so, it's, uh, so you can understand how what transformations of uh, anthropological tr transformation of subjectivity can happen here in, in our country. And this news comes exactly during this turmoil and crisis around uh, Russia and Ukraine. So, so the, the, the standing bubbles, they somehow uh, embody the most essential human trait, like Homo erectus, yeah? and Hegel has very interesting point about how how reason uh, uh, how how uh, how will based on reason transforms into habit in his anthropology chapter of uh, of philosophy of spirit. So it's very very so they somehow reenacts and some somehow uh, Fratkov probably um, 
went to India just to, re just to, to, to reaffirm his being human, uh, like in this <laughs> sense, after all his... What, what is this information? Uh, where does it come from? It was fake, but still, but still, I mean, but still, it's fake as was made here, and fiction is not uh, so much different because it is, it's, it's a meaningful stuff. And, and also another story to, from my uh, British concept, uh, context when I'm currently teaching also, I was uh, also negotiating with a colleague from my university there uh, where, teach, where I'm currently teaching, and I, I, I mentioned that I will go to uh, the conference uh, about humanism. And uh, my British colleague exclaimed, oh, really? Uh, and uh, and is it, in, it is in Moscow. And she was being visibly surprised. Uh, and in, in, he, she even closed her eyes, you know, while saying this, like she was eating sort of chocolate or intolerable pleasure. So he, uh, humanism, she said, is so sweet, Alexei. Of course, of course you should go. So I mean, that's <laughs> so, I mean it's in this context of British uh, neoliberal university where uh, sort of escaping from, uh, from uh, days of uh, teaching for a conference could be considered as a humanist gesture which in some very practical sense. So uh, just, uh, but, but now I would like to focus more on the, on the on the more serious content, so so I would like to uh, how, basically I would w w I was going to make two points. First, also refer to uh, discussion of yesterday about uh, rethinking of uh, philosophical, philosophical anthropology in uh, relation to Virno and what Artemis said very interesting uh, stuff related to Porchnev. Uh, and somehow I will try to thematize it a little bit differently, not uh, from the point of negativity, but rather uh, from the point of what I would call uh, human anomaly, or uh, in this sense. Uh, so so it's, it was more not, not uh, about uh, so much about negation, which is a very different uh, and but very elaborated, interesting line of thought, but rather about detachment and. Uh, and isolation, which are somehow will link uh, to my theme of uh, of sleep and subjectivity, and then I will can proceed through the more Marxist part of this analysis, uh, which I call uh, 20 slash 47 uh, continuous capitalism or capitalist continuum, which I'm more 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 uh, interested now, and uh, how this produced what I would call no time temporality. Uh, so uh, for, for, beginning, uh, for the beginning also it's important to say that uh, also in relation to these debates about uh, post-human, I agree with Katie and also uh, we discussed it before that, uh, <coughs> but this, uh, this post-humanist discourse which is represented by many uh, Post scholars or sort of post discourses <laughs> like um, uh, uh, pro sort of post colonial, post intellectual, post in sort of these things. Uh, of course, ethically and politically, they are important. Of course, I'm feminist in my trying to be feminist in my practice and whatever, but I mean, theoretically, they're, they're really. I would say they try to replace the critique of capitalism with the shift or displacement of the uh, very identity of the human. So they think that if you re transform the identity of the human, not the, the whole apparatus of capitalist relation, can achieve something. So I think that generally in this, uh, s s so it's quite important discourse, but they're definitely not sufficient for subversion of capitalist relation. Uh, so it was just a note. And then I, <coughs> I was just uh, trying to go through, maybe quite briefly, through uh, these German debates on philosophical anthropology. And not just Gillian and Plesson, maybe a little, touching a little bit uh, Heideggerian point uh, here. But, uh, but, but because Artemi was already uh, somehow related to, uh, to Gillian, so I will be very brief on this. So, and, uh, so my, my take on this would be uh, more about uh, Negat not, not negativity or language in uh, anthropogenesis, but rather about this, the very strangeness of anthropogenesis. 
it's, it's, uh, it's somehow it could be similar to what Oksana was uh, saying yesterday about this um, human, like uh, alien or monstrous par parasite uh, inside of us which are touching Zizek points uh, in here. So, so in a way, uh, so it's not about loss or melancholia, so, so, so we, we lost a sort of... Uh, sort of essence of human or sort of humanity, but it's not about these uh, negative deter negatively determined conditions, but uh, rather about strangeness or detachment uh, than uh, this. So, uh, and, and, and that's why I also missed uh, uh, in Artemi very accurate account of por a portion. If I miss this strangeness, that's why I mentioned cannibalism. Yeah, that's why I mentioned this story that anthropogen uh, so that uh, in uh, so, so everything nice everything is related to this uh, 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 psycholinguistics with Gotsky, all this very important solid tradition of Soviet thought. But then there is the ter point of rapture when he says cannibalism, and then that means like the turn situation to a very strange side or monstrous side. And uh, I even haven't mentioned yesterday that he, Porshnev, was also a bel uh, believer of Yeti. He was thinking that this pr primordial cannibal, he is, could be still alive. And you could, this was the whole media rush about Yeti. So th this was my, would be my accentuation or my articulation of problem. So, so, so generally, uh, generally to, uh, uh, to quote Wierner's account of uh, Gale and Helmut Plesner, so generally, of course, uh, the, the uh, uh, the, the Arnold Glenn book, uh, the man and its uh, standing in the in the in the world is quite complex and uh, lengthy text, and I think it has very many many aspects of this anthropogenesis in this book. But generally, I would agree this account that, to quote Virno that um, he says man is problematic uh, because. He is deprived of a def definite environment. If the animal Im embedded in environment and reacts with innate assuredness to external stimuli, man environmentally disoriented as he is, has to wrestle with a flood of suggestions devoid of precise biological finality. Uh, uh, the overabundance uh, over uh, of stimuli uh, stimuli unconnected to any definite operative task, el elicit and enduring uncertainty and disorientation. It's very important disorientation, which can never be entirely dispelled. Uh, so, so or in Plesner terms, says we are not the animal open to the world always maintains a non-adherence or detachment with regard to the states of affairs and uh, events he encounters. So, if animal has a very specific for example, I don't know, rabbit or quirrel, they have specific habitat, uh, niche, uh, where they are uh, embedded, so they follow these uh, programs, biological programs, st uh, stimulus reaction s schemes to follow these programs. So this uh, opening which uh, uh, Galen suggests, it means that we have this rupture and detachment from this program, which produce a lot enormous consequences. So this uh, simple, basic, empty rupture produce enormous consequences. Um, yes. So, so, so in, in, in this sense, somehow, also very appropriate here to quote not uh, uh, Heidegger accounts of openness, uh, which discussed in Agamben, open, uh, but his uh, sort of chapter from his uh, int uh, another course, uh, introduction of in, in, in to metaphysics, uh, not the main concept of metaphysics, another course. And he quotes actually um, quotes the chorus from Antigone, the focus Antigone. And key sentence is uh, in his interpretation: uh, the wonders are many, and none is more wonderful than men. But this is a very normative translation, which conceals its uh, animality. I would call. Uh, animality of human, and, and uh, Heidegger gives another translation which could be uh, rendered to English like uh, uh, many are the wonders, but nothing works stranger than man, stranger. But he actually refers to Greek word deinos, which means something enormous, anomalous, strange, which triggers a sort of trembling astonishment of sacred horror. Uh, so, so uh, and he used the German word unheimlich. 
uncanny. So the in more proper translation that could be like, there are many uncanny, strange things in the world, but the uncanniest are the humans. So this, uh, this is sort of strangeness, so, so, uh, which, which is somehow, somehow stressed by Heidegger. Uh, so, uh, so uh, and also if we quote the whole, uh, the whole part of uh, this Antigone, which Heidegger quotes, it is about that uh, humans helps other anim animals uh, to uh, draw them from their uh, organic niches or ecological environments, just also, which also produce this sort of gap, like uh, fishing or like making traps for animals to extract, excavate them from their, their, uh, their niches uh, or environments in which they are embedded. So, so th this, uh, this, uh, this is, uh, this is, would also be my uh, definition, or not definition, but like very preliminary point on this, uh, on this uh, uh, st rather strangeness uh, and detachment from, uh, from this uh, context. And also for my study of sleep, sleep I was uh, also, it, it has quite a complex uh, structure, I, I have no time to explain here, but for me, this sort of sleep was actually the model of this detachment. Yeah, it's like this detachment of human body, of human consciousness from external world. So it, so it was very important for my point, which I made in uh, anthropological relevance or meaning of sleep. Uh, so, uh, so, so, or in other language, uh, this would mean that that uh, a production of human is a sort of uh, deactivation of sort of normative, exactly normative functioning of animal body, uh, its uh, embeddedness uh, into, or organism, embeddedness in this environment. Uh, and uh, this deactivation opens different uh, functionality or different functioning of uh, anim a human animal. So it could be said like this. Also, it could be related, just to make it very ex more clear, uh, would be used to, to understand this, it would, could be used another model, which was long-term uh, debate about what is poetic language, actually. Poetic language means, uh, since 20s in Opoya theories for Russian formalists, means that, that poetic language somehow suspends pragmatic functions of language. So it suspends these uh, sort of programmatic uh, reactions on words in terms of communication, in terms of our response and transmission of information, whatever. So poetic language somehow suspends uh, suspends uh, communi communicative function of everyday language, which is quite obvious point. So in, in, this, in this similar way, I think this uh, detachment of uh, hum, uh, hu of animal or rendering it to human animal somehow similar with the functions of on this dif very different level of language of course it's very different uh, level but somehow it's the same as in terms it could be understood as a sort of poetic detachment uh, of animal body into a sort of uh, rendering it to human body so uh, and this uh, so 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 uh, and uh, for example, uh, in late, uh, in, uh, in not in late, but in uh, Foucault, so it's about madness also, he has a famous paper that madness does not produce work. Madness is not producing work in the sense of artwork or in the sense of, uh, so, so madness is extreme or radical form of this detachment, uh, which somehow cannot already produce sort of poetics or by poetical creation of the human. So, uh, so this is, not, but this is not the whole story, because uh, I was recently working on uh, a very interesting anthropology implied in uh, uh, Levinas, in early Levinas, not this old Levinas with ethics of other, with uh, you know, with uh, the sort of worshiping for other uh, and so on and so on. But early Levinas, who was a very interesting thinker, and it was he was a sort of philosophical hooligan who actually challenged Heideggerian uh, thought uh, in many ways. So, and he, for example, he produced a very interesting short book before Second World War called On Escape, De Vasion, and he wrote uh, also after Second World War, being in 
prison camp uh, or how to say military captive uh, camp he he wrote this his book from existence to uh, existence uh, and uh also uh, in this these are very interesting early texts of levinas which uh gives us another turn and now enables us to have a very interesting critical view on what heidegger was doing. Of course, uh, Heidegger is another huge, enormous body of thought, but I mean it just in a very basic way. I will try to explain here. So, uh, so difference, uh, um, uh, difference of, because Heideggerian thought was exactly reaffirming, I mean, this sort of poetic, poetical uh, excavation of humans uh, uh, producing their strange poetic strangeness of humans, which was somehow embedded in Heideggerian uh, ontology. And Levinas uh, uh, tries to invert the basic, basic gro grounds of Heideggerian ontology. And he re actually, in these early books, uh, which are quite experimental, which are not dogmatic uh, late Levinas, uh, he suggests a sort of radicalization of uh, Heideggerian ontic ontological difference. So, uh, he says about the uh, strange existent without existence, so like being without uh, uh, ontic, so or, or this sort. And uh, in here inverts this uh, Heideggerian point, uh, saying rather about strangeness of being itself than humans. So, it's very also interesting reversal. So, so uh, so he discussed this uh, in terms of uh, rather being uh, is being with capital B in the logical sense uh, is a sort of a, a sort of a continuum, a uh, sort of un, in, uninterrupted series, as he called it in French. It is ilia in French, which uh, incessantly imposed on us, and the only exit from this uh, obsessive. Uh, being is the exits which he describes in terms of uh, escape or evasion. So, so, so he produced a very interesting reformulation or re-articulation of Heideggerian thought. So, so for him, he discussed not the, for example, the anxiety or angst of finite, finite of uh, facing your own end, end of your own existence, but he discussed rather horror of being itself, which is. Uh, strange and horrific in terms that it's continuous and unfolding entity. So it's continuously unfolding continuum. He doesn't use the word continuum, which is more interesting for me, but but I uh, prefer to take it like this. So 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 for he so he radically rearticulates and somehow tries to subvert subvert Heideggerian ontology in this, and produce his own theory of subjectivation, which somehow it's quite. Uh, <coughs> difficult to long to explain how he uh, established this sort of theory. But generally, in very simplistic terms, it's a sort of exit uh, from this continuum, imposed continuum of being. And, uh, it's as, oh, and he compares a uh, human subject with migrants or uh, refugees from this uh, strange continuum of being. Uh, and uh, so subjectivity itself built on this uh, movement of escape or, and one of his paradigmatic examples of this escape is sleep, because you can somehow withdraw from being, being at the same time, be, uh, at the same time, keep your existence, but in sort of suspended form. So you can, and he has a very interesting theorization of tiredness as ontological attitude. So how, somehow he, part, uh, he mimics and make a sort of parody, philosophical parody on Heideggerian thought, like he discussed laziness as one of the important uh, uh, phenomena, anthropological phenomena, which also somehow reveals uh, your ontological attitude to, to being. You don't want to take part. Yeah? So that's why you're lazy. Uh, so, 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 and that's why, uh, uh, so, so, and being in, in his, uh, he used a lot of concepts, uh, uh, quite also uh, uh, touching this uh, dimension of sacred or uh, or divinity, somehow uh, uh, through uh, Durkheim, for example, from his concept of the sacred. But but he is uh, so, uh, so. But for 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 him, exactly being in this sense of a, a sort of very stubborn fact of fact of exi of of 
existence, uh, which has no, it's like this, in a way, in a way like this God in Luther sense. So, so he has no, uh, you cannot grasp uh, this Norman's monsters continuous in a way, uh, you cannot affirm a sort of ratio behind this continuity, which has its meaning only in con continue to be. Yeah? So, and this for him is sort of this void of, re of meaning uh, at all in all this continuity. Somehow also he discussed in terms of uh, this philosophical event of death of God, this following the secularization and so on and so on. So being is a sort of oppressive continuity which has no exit and that's why he rejects idea of nothing because he says a being has no exit. So it's the, the problem of being that it has no exit. We cannot follow, for example, he was also reflecting uh, the argument of beginning of he Hegel's lo uh, science of logic about, because while being imprisoned in Second World War, he was reading science of logic and also somehow posed to Hegel this, uh, uh, this idea that uh, the problem with being that it has no exit. So it has no exits through nothingness and then dialectical process and so on. So, so it's a just a static flow of there is. So it was his basic uh, basic ideas. But I, I could explain later maybe in more detail. So he has a very uh, different reversal. So being is not something which was concealed and only pre-Socratics knew what is being and what, whatever. But being is too obsessive. It's, it's like... A, 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 uh, this lost letter which lays on the table, and this is the read, this anonymous, uh, anonymous verb there is. So it's an impersonal verb there is. So for him, is uh, this is like uh, uh, this uh, uh, this image or metaphor for grasping what he means here. So uh, so it, so uh, vice versa, we don't need to reveal this sort of primordial content of being with our attentive thinking like Heidegger works was constructed, but vice versa, we need to take a distance or detach from this continuous flow. Uh, and so, so, and so. This is similar to Gillen, isn't it? In a way, yes, that's why I link them, yeah, exactly. <coughs> detach, yes, so it means, that, yeah. Generally, I mean, it's a d d different registers which you can formulate in this un more anthropological, more ontological language. But me, me, I mean, I admire because uh, because in these uh, short books, Levinas was quite a sort of uh, subversive and not so ethically, you know, sweet and so and so on and so on. Uh, so so, and then I would link this to more to social ontology. Uh, of course, it needs more like, more explanation, and uh, probably later we could touch it. Uh, so, the, the the what I would call capitalist continuum, um, uh, it is based on idea how this ontological paradigm or or dispositive uh, somehow gets its social embodiment in modernity, in capitalist modernity. So, it's the second part, generally more historical part of my argument. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, it's also linked to the question uh, because uh, uh, many radical left today, they are endlessly asking how capitalism ends, how it will end, or all these uh, imaginary ends or whatever. But for me, I think to, to answer this question, we need to uh, outline and maybe deconstruct this di dispositive of continuity, not the end of capitalism so so th so so that's why I was trying to think through these ontological premises uh, uh, embedding them in more historical political economical sort of first of all of course Marx mm -hmm. and Marx uh, basically uh, describes capital as a sort of this oppressive continuum so so his definition of cap uh, 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 for example in working uh, working day, chapter of capital, um, that uh, capitalist production, he says, drives by its inherent nature towards the appropriation of labor throughout the whole 24 hours in a day. So uh, capital is a structure which somehow impose the continuity of extracting uh, surplus value on the 24 hours in a day. So it's its main one, in my view, essential feature, that it's 24 hours uh, continuity. 
Uh, and recently, there was some theorizing about this. For example, there was a published book by Jonathan Crary called, called 24 slash 7, Late Capitalism and the Ends of Sleep. He also ta ta tackled the question of sleep as a sort of interruption in this capitalist continuum, which is where, but this is book mostly, I would say it's a piece of very beautiful anti-capitalist rhetorics and he doesn't concern so much uh, these ontological uh, outcomes of this position. And for him sleep like a catechon, we, 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 are, we have no uh, time which was not uh, somehow controlled, penetrated by capitalist rationality. Our work and leisure are merging together. We are uh, obsessed by social media, so it's more empirical argument. So, and we, the sleep is the only one exit from this continuum. Uh, so, so it's but 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 it's like a catechone, which if even sleep was somehow would be absorbed to this continuum, so it was would be only capitalism and not humans. Yeah? So, it's, so for him, it's like a catechone, which uh, somehow uh, uh, defers this final end, but end in the sense of uh, capitalism triumph in this sense. So, so I that's why I suggest to explore in more detail this genealogy of this continuum, how it was embedded in political, economical, and social structures of modernity. Uh, uh, and if you will look into Grundrisse, uh, Marx has a very interesting other notes about uh, continuum or continuity in Grundrisse. Uh, for example, he says, I quote, um, uh, hence the greater scale, uh, the greater the scale on which fixed capital develops in the sense in which we regard it here. Uh, so it's more, more, this chapter about fixed capital. And the, the more does the continuity of the production process or, uh, or the constant flow of reproduction become, beca becomes uh, an externally compelling condition for the mode of production founded on capital. Hmm? So continuity, continuum, is not just sort of abstract ontological uh, notion, but it is also a sort of uh, uh, in it operation in the whole functioning of capital. Uh, or he repeats many times, like constant continuity of the process of production, uh, of uh, the, uh, the, the constant continuity of the process of production, uh, the, the, the unobstructed uh, and fluid transition of value form uh, from one form to another or from one phase to the process into the next appears as fundamental condition for production based on capital to much greater degree than for all earlier forms of production. It's also quoted from Grundrisse. So for example, so the, the main idea of cap uh, from the point of political economy, main idea uh, of uh, a main structure of capital keep continuity of uh, value production. So continuity is fundamental. That's why, for example, uh, he discussed the function of credit because credit, you need credit when you are in the danger that you will have not enough capital to continue production. So that's, that's why credit is also a function of this continuity, for example, and debt to relate to the contemporary debates about debt. So debt is also a sort of instrument to keep this continuity of uh, transformation of value forms, which is essential for capital. Uh, so from Marx also, uh, we could go through other uh, thinker based in this critical or radical tradition and for, uh, uh, somehow discussing this implication of continuity or continuum uh, in, uh, in, uh, uh, for contemporary or modern capitalism. For example, uh, 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 Frank already referred to this capitalism as religion text by Walter Benjamin and he just, for me it's, it's a bigger debate, uh, another debate with Max Weber or Ernst Bloch about was capitalism uh, a religion or not, but he uh, specifies a very specific uh, uh, continuity of capitalist practice as a cult. As a cult. He says capitalism has no holidays. Hmm? So he has uh, the practice of uh, capitalist mess, really sort of he compares it with the mess or sort of religious ceremony, is its continuity. So it's also also very and recent research is very interesting research because Benjamin is was also used the term continuum in his famous thesis about philosophy of history, like we should break the historical continuum, we should go out from historical continuum, whatever. There is a very interesting res, uh, in, uh, research, in, uh, in particular uh, Peter Fenwick's book called *The Messianic Reduction*, and he discusses. Uh, 
uh, uh, that exactly it was my intuitive hypothesis that Benjamin used the uh, term continuum and not occasionally. And indeed, he was even interested in a set theory. And uh, from his uh, exchange with uh, Scholem, with some other fellows who were in mat mat mathematics and so on. So he was very interested by, by, by set theories. So, so he, his interest into continuum is not occasional. And he had a lot of the, whole, the whole collaboration or conversation with Scholem on set theory. So it's also a very interesting fact which I discovered. So, so, so for, for, for Benjamin, this continuity of capitalism in, uh, or this continuum, capitalist continuum, which is embodied also in history, in historical, chronological continuum, of capital, is not, an, a, a, not a sort of uh, uh, contingent, but it's he even tried to mathematize and his understanding of this continuum. So he, he, he wants to uh, prove somehow on this on mathematical level. Also, another paradigm for thinking about this continuity would be not so Marxist, but late, uh, but, but Foucault work uh, about disciplinary power. Uh, because Foucault, Foucault uh, actually used the term continuum uh, in his work of 70s. Uh, he discussed disciplinary continuum of uh, of uh, late modern capitalist society. It's also in 70s, so it's, uh, he it also quite regularly used this term continuum. And for him it means that, it, in very basic words, if the pre-modern regime of power was uh, somehow punctuated by power was organized more in the sense of events, like punishment, like kings comes to the people, and so on and so on. So, uh, so here it refers to Kantarovich's book about uh, the two kings' bodies, and so on and so on. So, but but in modern regime of power, the main transformation is uh, is transforming power to continue uh, into continuum. So it's a basically essential feature for uh, modern biopolitical power. Uh, uh, and, uh, and in this, uh, quite, I'm also quite critical of this empirical understanding of biopolitics, but because for Foucault, I think generally his uh, famous uh, definition of biopolitics is somehow in, uh, in correspondence with these ontological definitions uh, of uh, which I, I tried to approach to, to through Levinas, because he said what is, uh, what was, uh, power was before by, uh, in sort of pre-modern society. It was just uh, uh, to, uh, imp uh, to, to, to let people leave or kill them. And his famous phrase from the first, uh, first uh, volume of History of Sexuality. And second, uh, how modern biopower is constructed is uh, let people die but force them to live, to keep continuity of their lives. Mm? So, so it also means that this uh, biopolitics is also fundamentally based on the idea of continuum, of forced continuity of life. Also translating this into another register, not political economical register, but into the register of uh, biopolitical register. And finally, another paradigm would be uh, uh, l l f uh, l uh, recent works of uh, Giorgio Agamben, who also was quoted here, and his discussion of monastic life, uh, his book Higher po Poverty, when he says about uh, uh, the model of subjectivity, which is a form or form of life, which uh, which is uh, pro uh, which is produced through the practice of monastic life, is uninterrupted prayer to God. So the, the monastic life is defined by this continuity, its form defined by this continuity of uninterrupted prayer to God. So each second of your life is your duty, is your, how to say, is your prayer to the God. So th this provides us with a sort of the model of how this continuity could be interiorized, how it could be, became the form of subject itself. So, uh, so it's a sort of how it could be turned to a mode of subjectivation. Mm. Mm. Uh, so, uh, so it's interesting because we have this, uh, how to say, I try to anticipate sort of criticism because there is a, so, so many different levels and it's very difficult to, how to say, to work through all of them. But, uh, but uh, so we could say, for example, that Levinas in his early book, he somehow just, uh, re 
how to say, reintroduce like Sartre in his uh, uh, in his uh, novel. Uh, it was called Nausea. Uh, Nausea. Nausea. Yes. yes. No, no gear. No gear, no, in English. Yes. Like about this this uh, obsessive presence of things are somehow provoked are vomiting, and we are all embedded in this alienated everyday produced by capitalist rationality. So probably this ontology is a sort of side effect of this everyday presence under this, how to say, a, a pre, a alienated, monotonous everyday life under uh, late capital for terror. But I would say that we could be more dialectical here and say that uh, like uh, Marx was saying again in Grundrisse uh, that they're only in the ripe or developed forms of sociality and capitalism is more developed than feudal society and so on and so on, we can see the origins. Yeah? So somehow, if we're not pre-human origins, so I mean this sort of strange ontological, our strange and absurd life after this. So it's like, it's like not a, dispositive but rather event catastrophic event which leaves us only this time for for afterlife a sort of monotonous meaningless afterlife but i, I would agree, wouldn't agree with such interpretation of uh, levinas uh, uh yeah so so uh uh and uh, last point maybe what i would call uh, how how t what anthropological consequences we now could have with this uh Continuum, uh, late cap what I call late capitalist continuum, is uh, 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 what I would call no time temporality, mm, because, because also how it affects our human experience of temporality. And here I also are very tempted to five minutes, uh, so I will be very like a digest. I don't know uh, for reader digest. For, for uh, the, the, the last point is that. Uh, how we ca how we can find models? What what actually what space uh, uh, is left for us in this capitalist continuum? It's a big question. How 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 was our temporality restructured, transformed? So my idea was to uh, use uh, this everyday language exp expression: "No time, I have no time. Sorry, I have no time," and so on. So, but to make it more uh, from empirical uh, pragmatic sense, to make it more. Uh, philosophical. So, uh, so no time temporality means that uh, uh, we are structurally deprived of this temporality in sense of human temporality that we have some time and so, and so on and so on. So in this condition of permanent time pressure, permanent managerialization of our life, a growing uh, continuity. So continuity is not something which already built. It's con con uh, continues to be more and more uh, refined and more and more structured and getting sort of microscopic dimensions and so on and so on. So in this uh, situation, uh, uh, it's uh, the, the time experience, uh, I would use here also another Benjamin idea about uh, destruction or narrowing of our experience. So, our, uh, so probably our experience of time itself is somehow destroyed. So in a way that we, this no times mean, means the sort of negation of this whole scheme of temporality which we had before. So, so probably the moment is not the moment that we are now in live in uh, late, late capitalism or in some post, post dimension, but the problem is that this time we live in is defined by the destruction of temporality itself. So, so it was, would be my idea of of, uh, for, for this diagnosis of this moment uh, we should be living now. So, and for this, uh, I would like to use the quite funny example from theology also from St. Augustine uh, book about uh, uh, called Confessions, famous book, and his 11th chapter about time where he has this nice, uh, everybody knows this theory of time as a uh, distensio animi, like uh, stretching the soul and so on, but, he has a very nice uh, example, and he, in this same, the same chapter, saying, uh, before actually discussing what time is, he is interested to answer the question of uh, those who are trying to challenge Christianity, putting the difficult question. And the question was, what God was doing before creation? Huh? So what God was uh, doing before he created the world? If you could say that he was just hanging out, I don't know, doing nothing, uh, spending his time as sort of 
pleasant way, not uh, operative, not doing something. It's like a, a Gambian interpretation of sort of inactivity embedded in the essence of he uh, has he, he, and no, but but uh, but uh, but the answer, the answer of Augustine is basically he had no time. Huh? So because, of course he has argument that time was created together with the world and so on. So but but his answer the, the, that he, he's, uh, God had no time. So it was very very. In, uh, no, because God, he, uh, but because he defines eternity in a very different way, not in physical sense as an in, in, infinite uh, uh, sort of consequence of moments, but as a sort of radical rejection of time. So I think so somehow, somehow this theological paradigm of no time hmm, could be somehow discussed in contemporary conditions when we indeed uh, somehow our, our moments of time somehow captured and be involved in permanent flow of production of value and there is a lot of devices like this I don't know many others which somehow based on calculation of our time and uh, on its uh, appropriation so so I, I would say that this is uh, uh, this is a sort of maybe secularized paradigm like what uh, uh, fathers of church like uh, Augustine was discussing. But uh, in previous conference, Mladen Dol uh, uh, said to me, probably Hegelian who could have another answer. Before creation, God should create concepts. So probably he gave an answer that God was doing, sort of preparing concepts for for but by, for creation the, the the world. But but still, I my question further goes. But what he was doing before creation the the the, the concept. So it was going to be yes. So it would be like a sort of ch ch precepts. kids uh, yes precepts probably yes kids question. But anyway, so in in so uh, uh, so. Uh, uh, Yes, actually, I could stop here. Uh, maybe That's we can discuss yeah. for for more. And, uh, yeah. We open it for questions. Mm. Questions, comments. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yes, Frank Ruder. Mm. No, I I am moderating. Yeah. Oksana is the second. Okay, thanks so much. Um, <clears throat> um, one rather comment if you if you would agree with this mm. Mm. Um, namely mm. um, then the idea must be I mean the loss of time right that you de depicted <clears throat> this means capitalism does not only extract labor power and labor force mm -hmm. but a pure form of perception a priori in other country mm -hmm. sense right mm -hmm. we're not structured yeah. via time and space in the transcendental aesthetics a any longer but we only have space left in some sense, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just like the, yeah, our transcendental yeah. constitution. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this, okay. this could be mm. one version. And in this precise sense, one could understand um, uh, Marx's idea that we're still living in a prehistory, precisely linked yeah. to what you said about God, right? Yeah. I mean, we're, we're living yeah, yeah, for yeah, the creation yeah. of time, in some yeah. sense, of history proper. Yeah, because this consequent structure of time, past, pre uh, uh, present, uh, future, somehow suspended, though we have these circular moves. Yeah, yes, I agree. But, but generally, it's also, there is very interesting uh, research in, um, because now your cognitive science are booming now. And I was just interested that I discovered that there is already experiments with measuring of our time, which we can perceive or consume as minimal time unit. And it's like two seconds. And they uh, do it through laboratories. So the idea is to provide instrument of measuring our time for, again, for capital accumulation. So it was also somehow linked with this logic, so it's, th 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 these experiments they are they are existing. So it's a more, a more empirical level, yeah. Yeah, and the, and the question would be related to the um, mm. to the Benjamin uh, quote that you use, breaking the continuum, right? I mean, this yeah. as, yeah. as an idea, because I mean, there uh, you, you enumerated and enlisted uh, several several ideas of conceptualizing continuity somehow. Mm. And one idea of conceptualizing continuity is through permanent revolution, right? Yes, so and so yeah. I mean, yeah. so. What I, what I want to uh, aim at is to say mm. that there must be different concepts of discontinuity mm -hmm. because the history mm -hmm. Foucault mm -hmm. is telling is in some sense a discontinuous history mm. Good. which generates continuity. So mm -hmm. one needs another or two concepts yes, of discontinuity it, yeah. because otherwise, I mean, I mean, just like referring to, uh, to the, uh, the part where you said you, uh, one should dialecticize that, I, th I think one, 
both concepts somehow are related, continuity and uh, discontinuity, and one needs two concepts of discontinuity mm. not to fall. I mean, in some sense, right, uh, the bourgeoisie he likes permanently revolutionizing yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah. I mean, this is no, no, I even use the term, a sort of, uh, I use the term even counter, counter continuity in one of my papers, yes. Yes, so, so generally I, uh, on this, no, but generally if you understand also, also there is another idea of uh, modernity which somehow based on the idea of revolution and this de definitely permanent revolution is was at the beginning, not it's not, not just Trotsky who said in 30s, but was the very beginning of permanent revolutionizing process and Marx exactly stressed it in uh, communist manifesto, this revolutionizing force of capital which could be somehow appropriated or contested, whatever. So I mean, but this, uh, yes, but it's, uh, it's a very good point because it doesn't mean that this just this simple continuity uh, which could be rather compared to everyday life or its continued monotonous continuity of but but generally my 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 point was that these I use this with very high risk of using this uh, sort of uh, Speculate, speculative mode, that it's a sort of uh, very simple dispositive is actually the main the main uh, uh, device of this dispositive is just forcing to be. So it's like a forcing to be. So it's very simple. So, and this forcing has no, uh, it's, it's like force without significance, force without meaning. So it's like forcing to be. It's, it's like also, by the way, in, uh, I, I, I mean, uh, in Badiou, I think it's interesting that also because because of the question of forcing. It's very interesting that he says that, um, I have to say, uh, that he tries to, uh, not in the Heideggerian sense of like making being something uh, uh, unachievable, so distant, horizon which we, we lost in, in previous, but he sort of produces sort of uh, ontology of mathematics, putting being rather in neutral dimension, mathematical dimension. But I would be more on the side of uh, Levinas and probably Agamben because his l uh, later works also somehow close to the discussion of being as a sort of commandment or being a sort of imperative and so and so on. But uh, so I would be close more to this than uh, saying that no, it's not so, ni uh, so nice being is so nice a neutral thing which is could be counted through theory of sets and so on. But no, it could his have the, its own not agency, but the sort of uh, very specific singular dispositive of organizing beings. Yeah? So in this sense of this, if uh, this ontic ontological difference could be interpreted as a sort of, not just a neutral dif difference, but a dispositive, a sort of organization of forces. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. Mm. Um, okay. Mm. Uh, so um, I was, um, mm, I like this um, idea of um, uh, letting them die but uh, forcing them to leave. It's famous for the uh, formula. Yeah. Yes. Uh, oh. Yeah, I um, uh, continue. The, the, so uh, we have this uh, biopolitical uh, formula and uh, what happens like uh, they die, um, it lets them die, but then they, they are forced to leave. So we have like this, uh, uh, isn't, doesn't it follow that the no time temporality is uh, designed for, for the undead, for the zombie. Mm. Uh, because uh, uh, those who die but are forced to leave are undead. No, no, and, and here, uh, at this point, I remember about... So, the, on the one hand, we have the before time, um, and on the other hand, the afterlife. Uh, uh, so, there is uh, this um, uh, a certain uh, asymmetry between uh, life and... Uh, as if a time was designed for life, Space was rather designed, uh, like afterlife uh, was rather, um, uh, let me uh, formulate it in a more clear uh, way. Uh, like yesterday we were talking about uh, the uh, avant-garde Soviet mm. ideas of uh, resurrection, the dead, and sending them, because when we resurrect all the dead bodies, there will be no place on the planet, so we need, uh, we need to conquer the, the cosmos, the, sp the cosmic space, and... Um, uh, in order to uh, provide the space for all the dead bodies. So, in a way, uh, the expansion in space becomes uh, something like the post, uh, the afterlife um, uh, alternative of the, uh, the envelopment in, in time, what is history. So, this post-historical mode of the zombie kind of uh, existence is the, the, the continuous um, uh, expansion in, in the space, special um, expansion of, 
of the bodies, of the undead bodies. Mm. Not precisely yes, the could living. More or less uh, sublime a zombie, but another example, for, for, for example, for, uh, I remember it, uh, it was a, 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 a satirical book by, by the Italian um, um, writer Aldo Nove, I think, or, and he, has, he discussed the story of uh, uh, was, uh, the family, and uh, they have uh, one of the sons. He's a very famous mm. sportsman, a very well-paid sportsman, mm. and he is uh, uh, skiing from the mountain skiing. And he was uh, at sudden he was dead, uh, but he had still contract. And they somehow put him on the ski, and you know, to to uh, to, to, uh, to yeah, to finish this this uh, this mm. stuff. So I mean, this is a sort of yes, exa exactly. I mean, the the of course this is as a sort of dispositive. It's like uh, Marx was saying, like it captures uh, uh, also the dead. So, so I mean, it's a sort of try to capture also the dead. I mean, it's a sort of this uh, specific. Uh, model of continuous operation and so on and so on. But yes, I, I agree. And so, so probably zombie is also a cultural expression of this continuum, I don't know. Sort or of, zombie yeah. or the, the energy, as uh, Dmitry Bulatov yesterday were talking, no. uh, was talking about this, um, this sarcophaga and uh, no. this uh, apparatus which makes uh, energy for the making, uh, yes, working it, the it, vibrator for the wife. in this discussion yeah. of biopolitics because what, for example, this Agamben discussed this, what means the clinical uh, death, what, how we can define the mo moment of death. It became blurred. It can became not a bo uh, borderline, but it became a sort of continuum between death and life. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, other questions? Uh, maybe I have a comment. Uh, 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 actually, I, in general, I agree with your analysis, and uh, it's very important to emphasize, as I already also did, that uh, the, uh, we start with the uh, plenitude of being, not some kind of void uh, uh, in a Heideggerian or Hegelian sense, uh, while uh, the humanity is precisely if you want you know, negativity or a detachment or, mm -hmm. uh, uh, or escape, but certainly it has a problem with this kind of uh, 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 <clears throat> excess of information mm -hmm. uh, coming. Uh, uh, however, <clears throat> uh, I, uh, I have a problem with this uh, uh, simple idea of continu continuum, both for the uh, 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 for the being uh, uh, in the Levinasian sense and for the capitalist temporality because I think that uh, capitalist temporality pre precisely plays mm. on the double definition of time. And mm. uh, I have a, a paper, I'm sorry to refer, but if I'm not clear now, you can look mm -hmm. at the, my article on Marx's temporality. And mm -hmm. there I make an argument that actually the surplus value proceeds mm -hmm. from the play between mm -hmm. the continuous nature of real time mm -hmm. and the artificial nature of contracted working day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, in principle, of course, the working time is limited in some way. Mm -hmm. Workers do go to sleep. The very catch is that uh, they agree on a certain uh, arbitrary uh, a span of time, for example, 10 hours or 12 hours or 8 hours. Mm -hmm. But then the worker, uh, I mean, time is actually continuous. So it, it is always in excess of any given discrete measure. Mm -hmm. So the worker has an inertia of working more, even mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. he does, and also he, of course, mm -hmm. or she want to earn more money. Mm -hmm. And it is this, uh, motion, this gradient of motion, which uh, produces surplus value and makes the capitalist cheat the worker. Mm. Because mm. worker mm. works in the real time. Mm. And uh, mm. the, the capitalist counts the uh, abstract time of uh, the working day. Uh, uh, which, I mean, it's correct that ca continuum has to do with this. But precisely, continuum as such it's also abstract. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the true temporality, according to Marx, would be the temporality that is based in the things themselves. So a mm. just measure of workers' labor mm. would be a measure that would appreciate the qualitative uh, mm. effort mm. made, uh, in, mm. I, invested mm. into mm. the creation of this particular object. Mm. Mm. So 
uh, if I need to, to make a table, then I have a project mm -hmm, of a table, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then... Yeah, the use time. Mm. Yes. Mm. Uh, so, uh, I, and I cannot, uh, I cannot go to, to dinner if I, I made the table, but I didn't paint one corner of it. Mm. Of course, mm. I will mm. paint mm. this corner mm. because otherwise the mm. table mm. would not be ready. And it is this way that we should measure time, mm. the, the 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 logical, uh, you know, organic uh, mm. temporality, use temporality, as Katie rightly said. But mm. Uh, mm. Uh, unfortunately. The, the capitalist, uh, capitalism puts us into this dilemma between abstract tem temporality and the continuum, which is also abstract. I mean, what is mm. continuum? To yeah, totally irrational. No, no, I agree, agree. No, I, basically I'm for abstract, but, <laughs> but not for <laughs> this in the sense, ideological sense, and I try to ma make it more concrete. But exactly, I mean, the, I, I, yes, I agree that it's a good argument, uh, but generally I was, uh, referring uh, especially to this no, uh, no time or distraction of time for the current, uh, more current moment, uh, which somehow Mark was, was also theorized uh, by Italian post-autonomist uh, mo movement like real subsumption to capital when mm -hmm. there is no uh, space outside of capital. So, so I was so a sort of continuum also related to this idea of real subsumption. So can, we can get full continuum only. Well, of course, it's a debatable question. Is it real subsumption now or not? It could be like, like ever. But so in, in this state of real subsumption, uh, so probably the unit of uh, time uh, which captives try to uh, employ uh, while uh, measuring value of uh, wealth produced by worker. It could be also in crisis in a way so they argue that there is why it's empirical consequences there is a blurring between uh, time between labor time and leisure time, whatever. So I mean rather this. And of course uh, this idea of uh, that worker by inertia continues to work and producing like because of his generosity, <laughs> yeah. in a way. Free gifts. Yes, yes. Uh, generosity, pr producing this extra value for capital. I think it could be related to this mode, mode of subjectivation of continuum, which I quoted, related to Agamben, to, through this, how this mm. uh, Christian ascetic practice was somehow, so work is also can be translated as a sort of secularized uh, liturgy or whatever, yeah. in a way. Yeah. So I mean, in this sense, it was a sort, would be sort mm. of another, uh, paradigm mm. for understanding this, but maybe, great, yeah. very interesting, yeah. very interesting. Yeah. Okay, there are no more questions. Thank you, Alexei. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.